Although the Mythbusters were seen using a handheld light meter to measure the cement's albedo, they never showed us what its readout said. The only numbers that they ever showed us were those that they punched into a pocket calculator. Why? Could it be that the numbers on their light meter were not what they wanted you to believe they were? If the Mythbusters wanted to accurately simulate the lunar reflectivity, they could have just simply used asphalt. Because according to the American Concrete Pavement Association, new asphalt has an albedo of around 5 to 10 percent. Whereas weathered asphalt has an albedo ranging from 10 to 15 percent. And as Adam Savage told us on the program, now the albedo of moon dust is between 7 and 10 percent according to our sources at NASA. David Percy, co-author of Dark Moon, previously pointed out the similar reflectivity between moon dust and asphalt. That the astronaut will be adequately lit whilst in the shadow side of the LEM solely from natural light or earthshine bouncing off the lunar surface is an argument advanced by others as well as Jan Lundberg, but it's untenable. To make a direct comparison, the surface of the Moon on average has the ability to reflect light from any source whatsoever at whatever distance from its surface to the same degree as asphalt does on Earth, on average approximately 7%. Knowing that the reflectivity of asphalt is very similar to that of the lunar surface, we decided to do a test of our own. Tonight, we're going to do something that has never been done before. We know that according to this document by the American Concrete Pavement Association, that asphalt has the exact same albedo as the lunar surface. And asphalt is what the road is made of. So it's a clear night tonight, and we're going to go to this place, this asphalt road where there's no traffic, there's no street lights, and we're going to do this, this experiment to see if the light bouncing off the asphalt road is enough to illuminate the shadowed side of an object. If we can bring out any detail, then well, we'll know that the propagandists have one there, but if we end up pitch black, then we know that we're onto something. And here we are at this empty asphalt road 20 kilometers away from Sydney. For our artificial sun, we will be using nothing more than the car's high beams. Of course, because we only need one for this test, we duct taped one of the headlights. Okay, there we go. And now we just got the one light source. All we need now is the lunar module and Buzz Aldrin. Fortunately, being a lifelong LEGO fan, we had access to the official LEGO model of the Apollo Lunar Lander, complete with astronauts. As you can see, we just have the one light source, which is the headlight, and we're on an asphalt road, which has the near identical albedo to the lunar surface. We've got the LEGO Lunar Module here, and we've got a little LEGO astronaut. He's going to be Buzz Aldrin. So we just put him in the shadow. Now we're going to get some photographs and see if we can get him to be illuminated while standing in the shadow. See if the light bouncing off the asphalt is enough to bring up any detail. Before we begin this experiment, here's a quick refresher on basic photography. When taking a picture, whether night or day, photographers need to get the right exposure. Exposure simply means allowing light to pass through the camera's lens and allowing it to fall onto photographic film within a given amount of time. If you want to photograph a brightly lit object, a fast exposure setting is required. To photograph dimmer objects, you need to increase the exposure time. This will be important for our test, because some propagandists may argue if it wasn't a reflected light, perhaps the astronauts increased their exposures when photographing shaded objects. We're going to be taking uh, various exposure settings. Now exposure is made up of two elements, f-stop and shutter speed. f-stop refers to how wide the camera's aperture is during any exposure time. The more the aperture is opened, the more light it will allow in. The different aperture settings are measured in different F numbers, such as F8, F5, F2, etc. 
the smaller the F number, the wider the aperture is opened. For this experiment, all of our exposures will be made using F4, which is a reasonably wide f-stop. Now all that's left is shutter speed. Shutter speed, as the name suggests, refers to how long the camera's shutter is left open. The longer the shutter is kept open, the more time light is given to continuously fall on film. If you keep the shutter open for one hundredth of a second, you have a one hundredth of a second shutter speed. If you keep it opened for one second, you've got a one second shutter speed. Two seconds, a two second shutter speed, and so on and so on. I'm taking a one second exposure here. And as you can see, he's now really dark. Suppose I increase the exposure setting somewhat. Okay. And now we have a 1.3 shutter speed. Still too dark. Let's try 1.6 second exposure. Still too dark. You know, here's a two second exposure. That's a bit better, but the figure is still dark. 2.5 second exposure. Still about the same. As you can see, even with a reasonably wide f-stop and a surface with the same reflectivity as the moon, these fast exposures simply don't allow enough light into the camera to make the LEGO astronaut light up like Aldrin. The detail doesn't begin to show until we use a 3 second exposure. And even then, we can just barely make him out, because he is still significantly darkened. There was a 3 second exposure, now here's a 4 second exposure. Reasonably better, but still... The Ashfelt's extremely low albedo simply doesn't reflect enough light onto our astronaut, and the fast exposures are simply not allowing enough of this minuscule reflected light to register on film. Now compare these results to the original Buzz Aldrin photograph. If these two images are taken under the same conditions, why is our LEGO astronaut faded into complete blackness? As we learned earlier, to photograph dimmer objects like our shaded astronaut, a longer exposure is required. But evidently, neither a 5 second exposure, nor a 6 second exposure, nor an 8 second exposure is enough to make our Lego man as bright as Aldrin. Okay, here's a 10 second exposure. the 10 second exposure. 13 seconds. Okay, to pretty long exposures now is 15 seconds. Now we're looking to something that's even remotely similar to the 
Buzz Aldrin picture. Oh, 20 seconds. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Ha <laughs> ha.